Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless radical pro-palestinian rallies on u.s college campuses have jewish students in fear for their safety as jews celebrated passover yesterday anti-israel protests reached a fever pitch police arrested dozens of protesters at yale while columbia university canceled in-person classes <laughs> On Columbia's campus, Jewish students endured threats with calls to go back to Poland. Here, a demonstrator points at pro-Israel students while holding a sign that reads, All Qassam's Next Targets. And a Jewish professor is denied entry to the campus while school officials look on. I am a professor here. I have every right to be everywhere on campus. You cannot let people that support Hamas on campus and me, a professor, not go on campus. Let me in now. Meanwhile, other Columbia faculty members join protesters chanting Free Palestine and calling for the school to divest from companies selling weapons to Israel. Demonstrations growing more radical have Jewish students fearing for their safety, leading one rabbi to tell students to stay away because the school can't protect them. I was there today and it made me sick hearing the things they were saying and doing. Um, so over this holiday, I kind of just want to try to avoid it as best as I can for my own safety. Monday, the school went to online classes only. Protests, however, spread to other schools in the Northeast. Monday night at NYU, police clashed with protesters while making arrests as they tore down a tent encampment. At Yale, police arrested 45 students for trespassing as their peers celebrated them as heroes. Pro-Palestinian students at MIT have declared part of their campus a liberated zone. While at Harvard, officials shut down Harvard Yard until Friday to prevent similar protests. The reaction is simply a horror. Rabbi Moisha Hauer told CBN News it needs to be stopped. It's been happening in one place after the other at different degrees. And if it's not addressed properly and efficiently, it will, it will continue to grow. If they're doing things which break the law, they should have consequences as defined by the, by the law but they must have consequences. The answer can't be, we spoke to them. Monday, President Biden condemned the anti-Semitic protests while also condemning those he says don't understand what's going on with the Palestinians. Eric Stackelbeck to you because you talk about some of the politicians propagating this. I want to play some more sound because it's instructive of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez praising the Columbia protesters. It is especially important that we remember the power of young people shaping this country today of all days as we one, once again witness the leadership of those peaceful student-led protests on campuses like Columbia, Yale, Berkeley, and many others. Do you think, Eric, that she's trying to stir things up or just doesn't really get it? I think she's trying to stir things up, and whether she knows it or not, Trace, she is an accessory to evil. I don't say that lightly. What we're seeing unfold on these college campuses is pure evil. There's really no gray areas here. My blood is boiling. It's 2024. We are seeing scenes reminiscent of 1933 Germany. That is not an exaggeration. Does anyone doubt that if these pro-Hamas, that's what they are, pro-Hamas terrorist yeah. sympathizers were able to get their hands on a Jewish student, they would do bodily harm. And by the way, Trace, it starts with the Jewish people. It never ends with the Jewish people. Look, they were also yeah. burning American flags at some of these protests in New York City. And as a Christian, I won't remain silent on this. I'm going to make my voice heard. And millions of Christians around the world will now, unlike, sadly, yeah. in the 1930s. Ephesians 6.12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Satan hates the Jews with a passion. He hates them 
because God provided both the Bible and the Messiah through them. He hates them because God called them to be his chosen people. He hates them because God has promised to save a remnant of them. He hates them because God loves them. Satan works overtime to plant seeds of hatred in people's hearts toward the Jews. He is determined to destroy every Jew on planet Earth so that God cannot keep his promise to save a great remnant. He tried to annihilate them in the Holocaust. He failed. He will try to destroy them once again during the last half of the tribulation. He will fail again. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. An Israeli airstrike destroyed the top three floors of a building today in Gaza City. A warning was issued about an hour ahead of this strike. No injuries were reported. The IDF says it launched more than two dozen strikes across Gaza over the past 24 hours. After 200 days of war, Gaza's health ministry says more than 34,000 people have died due to Israel's military operation. The Israel-Hamas war has entered its 200th day. Fears are rising amid the long-anticipated Israeli offensive in Gaza's Rafah and calls for free. The hostages in Hamas's captivity are only getting louder by the day. Meanwhile, Israel's war with Iran-backed Hezbollah has also picked up pace. In the latest, the Israeli military has released a video showing that it has killed Hussein Ali Azgul in a strike and described him as a significant operative in the Iran-backed Hezbollah's aerial defense unit. Now, state media and witnesses said the strike took place about 40 kilometers north of the border with Israel. Hezbollah has confirmed that two of its key members were killed by Israeli strikes. In response to Israeli strikes, Hezbollah has launched a combined air attack using decoy and explosive drones that targeted two Israeli bases north of Acre as well. Now, on the negotiation front, United States has stated that Hamas has moved the goalposts in ceasefire talks with Israel. U.S. says the Hamas is more interested in full-scale regional war and has changed its demands repeatedly. Hamas moved the goalposts. Uh, there are demands that they have made. Israel has moved some way to meeting those demands, and Hamas has then changed their demands. And so it certainly does seem like Hamas is more interested in a full-scale regional war, that they were watching the events of the past few weeks uh, and making the determination that uh, they might get the full-scale regional war they were hoping for, and so have not agreed to uh, a very significant proposal that was on the table. And so we will continue to push for an agreement because we believe uh, it's in the interests of uh, Israel. We believe it's in the interests of the United States. We believe it's in the interests of the broader region. But it takes two to make an agreement. And right now, Hamas has signaled that they don't want an agreement. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. North Korea says it conducted drills yesterday simulating a nuclear counterattack using super large multiple rocket launchers. North Korea has revealed that it staged tactical drills simulating a nuclear counterattack using super large multiple rocket launchers for the very first time. The training guided by Kim Jong-un on Monday was focused on strengthening the regime's nuclear counteroffensive using 600 millimeter multiple rocket launchers. 
The North State-run newspaper Dodong Shimun reported Tuesday morning that Kim was satisfied with the rocket's accuracy. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff detected the launch of multiple short-range ballistic missiles on Monday, launched toward the East Sea from the Pyongyang area. The South Korean military stressed that it has a system in place to detect and intercept ballistic missiles if they were to fly toward the south. It also sent a stern warning to the north. International security cooperation, including territorial cooperation between South Korea, the U.S., and Japan, will be further strengthened. If North Korea attempts to use nuclear weapons, it will face an immediate, overwhelming, and decisive response from the ROC-U.S. alliance, and the regime will come to an end. Pyongyang said Monday's drills were conducted to send a clear warning to its enemies as it denounced Seoul and Washington's recent joint air drills for raising tensions. But South Korea's military has said that there is another motive behind the launch, promoting exports to Russia. We believe there is a complex purpose, like demonstrating the performance of the super-large multiple rocket launchers for exports. The speculation comes as a military source said Russia's government delegation visited North Korea on Monday under the radar. This raises the possibility that Pyongyang, which has been criticized by the international community for exporting weapons to Moscow, is intentionally hiding the visit to make additional arms deals. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. It's one of the few places people in Poho Pass can receive medical care. But even this hospital run by Doctors Without Borders has been forced to cut its daily outpatients from 150 to 50. Staff and patients alike have trouble accessing the site due to violence in surrounding areas. This man said police in an armoured vehicle shot him the previous day, adding all he had in his hands at the time was a piece of wood he was hoping to sell as Kindle. I heard gunshots coming from the armoured car, so I hit the ground with my hand covering my head. And when I saw all the blood, I thought I was going to die. Armed gangs forced the closure of the main international airport in early March and have paralyzed operations at the country's largest seaport, where containers filled with key supplies remain stuck. They've also looted and set fire to pharmacies. Doctors here say they've run out of many medications used to treat diabetes, asthma and high blood pressure. The gangs, who now control most of the capital, had said their siege was a battle to oust former Prime Minister Ariel Henry. Though since he said he would resign on March 11, there's been little let up in attacks. A car and building debris swept away by a flooded river in Jiangwan, southern China. 300 soldiers have been sent to rescue people stranded there after powerful storms swept through the region. Heavy rain damaged roads and triggered landslides, cutting off the town's water and electricity supplies. In the megacity of Shenzhen, 17 million residents have been advised to stay home. Authorities issued a red alert, the highest warning, after streets in the urban center flooded. Schools and businesses have been shut and some public transportation suspended. Elsewhere in Guangdong province, the rain has eased and people are assessing the damage. Flooded fields are all that's left of Huang Jinrong's farm. I used to plant rice here, but now it's all flooded, flooded beyond repair. His city, Qingyuan, was among the hardest hit. Days of heavy rain caused nearby rivers to burst their banks, forcing him and his neighbors to take shelter under an overpass with the few possessions they have left. More than 110,000 people have been relocated since the weekend. Parts of Yingde in northern Guangdong are also underwater. Rescue teams are scouring the city, searching for the 38,000 people still stranded. Dozens were injured and needed to be airlifted to hospital. The neighboring provinces of Guangxi, Jiangxi and Hunan are also on high alert. Scientists say climate change has caused seasonal storms to worsen and arrive earlier with Asia one of the regions most affected by global warming. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. 
Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16.21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16.8 and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. More than 200 aftershocks have shaken Hualien, the eastern part of Taiwan that was hit hard by the island's big quake on April 3rd. The new shaking started Monday and ran through the night, causing previously damaged buildings to tilt further. Several were left leaning badly, but there were no reports of casualties. The affected buildings have been left empty since the 7.2 magnitude earthquake hit the largely rural and sparsely populated area earlier this month, killing at least 17 people. Elsewhere on the island, including in the capital Taipei, buildings swayed throughout the night, with the largest of the many quakes registering a 6.3 magnitude. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen on her Facebook page called on people to stay alert and not to panic in the event of more earthquakes. As the measles epidemic grows, the CDC is also warning about another potentially deadly childhood disease. It was almost eliminated in the mid-90s, whooping cough. It's caused by an extremely contagious bacteria that can lead to severe respiratory infections, including pneumonia. Public health officials say whooping cough cases are soaring across Europe, Asia, and parts of the U.S. For example, in Northern California, CDC says so far this year there have been more cases than in 2012. That year, there were nearly 49,000 cases nationwide, the highest this century. Officials also say, as with the current measles outbreak, international travelers could bring more cases here. So what are the symptoms of whooping cough? At first, it seems like a normal cold. Symptoms start with a runny or stuffed nose, low-grade fever, and coughing. Those coughs gradually get worse over a week or two and turn into violent coughing fits that can lead to vomiting and make it difficult to breathe. It's important to note many babies don't cough. Instead, they may turn blue and struggle to breathe. They may have those common cold symptoms the entire illness, which can last as long as 12 weeks. Pertussis is usually treated with antibiotics. Doctors say it's important to treat whooping cough early before the telltale coughs start. Early treatment can make those fits much less serious and prevent spreading the bacteria. About a third of babies younger than one year old who get whooping cough need care in the hospital. People around the world are asking what is going on. Everything seems to be falling apart in every possible way. Violence is at epidemic levels, with all the nations around the world full of anxiety and uncertainty of what tomorrow will bring. The Middle East is consumed by civil wars. Planet Earth is on the verge of World War III. Earthquakes are more frequent and more intense. Extreme weather has become the norm. We are seeing diseases that were once eradicated roaring back to life. People are starving to death because of politics, war, drought, and other weather-related catastrophes. People are looking for answers, and those who have eyes to see and ears to hear know exactly what is happening. Jesus, who is God in flesh form, is letting us know that through the events taking place around the world, He is returning. Jesus, speaking to His disciples about the signs of His coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24:12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments, as we read in 1 John 3.4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, 
but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. The desperate search for 27-year-old Veronica Butler and 39-year-old Jillian Kelly appears to have come to a sobering end. This case was tragic. You have two people um, who are who are dead um, and four people that committed an, an, an absolutely brutal crime. Texas County officials charging these four suspects with murder, conspiracy, and kidnapping. Authorities say Butler was driving from Kansas to Oklahoma to pick up her kids for a birthday party with Kelly there to supervise when they were intercepted by a group that included Tiffany Adams, the children's paternal grandmother. Police say Adams has been waging a custody battle with Butler over her grandkids for years and allegedly resorted to violence. It has certainly been a tragedy for everybody involved. According to a court affidavit, the teenage daughter of one of the women charged told police the suspects were part of an anti-government group that had a religious affiliation, with state investigators learning they called themselves God's misfits and met on a regular basis. Further in those court documents, the teen says her mom confessed that they were involved in the deaths of Butler and Kelly, telling investigators they used burner phones to communicate and block the road to stop Butler and Kelly and divert them to where Adams and several others were waiting. Police ultimately tracing five stun guns and three prepaid cell phones back to Adams, the investigation starting with Butler's abandoned car found by a family member after the women didn't show up at a party. The evidence that was discovered inside of that abandoned vehicle and around it um, were able to help our investigators determine that there was foul play involved. Now some closure, but not necessarily healing for this community. Absolutely devastating. They were both young and vibrant and they deserved more. We're talking about children being inside this home and being victims of this also. So it's a very tragic, very sad situation. Just after 930 Monday morning, a call to 911 notifying police of five dead people, two of which are children inside of a home in the Czech Hall Estates neighborhood in southwest Oklahoma City. When officers arrived, they made entry into the home and did indeed find five people in there who are deceased. The five people had injuries all consistent with homicides. Memphis police are on the hunt for at least two suspects after a mass shooting Saturday night during a block party that left two people dead and six others injured. Police say that there were hundreds of people at this unlicensed party while the shooting broke out. And there is a major violent crime issue in the city. Police data shows that Memphis had nearly 400 homicides last year, a new record. One woman says she heard all the gunshots from the block party last night and is fed up with the crime. Unjust to the people for our mayor to get on the news and state that our crime is down. It is not down and it's no longer a joke for us. And every night we got kids steady dying, children steady dying, you know, adults steady dying. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days, society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. All right, outrage erupting as West Virginia, in West Virginia, a transgender middle schooler dominated the shot put competition. So girls from the rival school, what they did is they walked off in protest as 13-year-old Becky Pepper Jackson won the meet by over three feet. This is just days after a federal appeals court ruled against West Virginia's 2021 Save Women's in Sports Act, which allowed Pepper Jackson to compete as a girl. Charlie, great to see you this morning. Um, outrageous. I mean, once again, by the way, you want to see how outrageous? Just take a look at the shot put meat results. Um, the transgender student threw it 32 feet, 9 inches. The closest competitor, uh, female, was 29 feet, 6 inches. But they all refused um, to kind of meet the acknowledgement that this Becky Pepper Johnson was the winner. And, and I, I think in the end, this is the only thing, not the court, not the administration. This is the only thing that's going to, re you know, reintroduce sanity. Women standing up.
Yeah, and it's really upsetting that these middle school girls have to forfeit their opportunities in order to take a stand. I mean, that takes a lot of courage, especially at that age, but they're doing this for the greater good. It's not just for themselves. I mean, if I think back to when I was an athlete, I would want nothing more to compete in every single meet that I was able to. These girls decided, you know what, we wanna make sure that people are paying attention. This is the only way, and the only way for, I think, the government to really start paying attention, and especially that federal appeals court that just struck down the law in West Virginia that bans transgender athletes from competing in female sports. Mm -hmm. It's the only way they're going to start saying, okay, maybe we are doing something incorrectly here. I'm not quite as optimistic. I don't think the court's gonna notice the impacts on real life. They're caught up in both And just saying if, if, more, if more girls start to do this, yeah. Will, it's gonna take a whole lot more than just these five athletes in this one circumstance. The problem is the courts follow the Biden administration, they follow Title IX, and the whole thing's driven now by identity politics, and somehow gender has superseded women. The Schizophrenic absurdity of our leaders, the Biden administration allowing men to invade women's sports. Proverbs 29.2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Being transgender is at odds with science and God's design, as we read in Genesis 126 and 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. Somehow, in some mysterious and wonderful way, the human male and female, in both body and spirit, are the image and likeness of God. Satan hates mankind because we are created in God's image. He is sowing confusion in the minds of our children. And he is busy in these last days devouring those who are not steadfast in the faith, as we read in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A, admit that you're a sinner. B, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. God, what if his appearance
appearance occurred on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.